So Kratinsky has got that 27% stake now in West Ham United. Obviously, it's been confirmed today. I believe he's bought out the shares and the way that the shares have been distributed, you know, I was led to believe, you know, on social media, was it David Gold that was selling part of his? But I think what we're seeing is a, a number of shares from David Sullivan, David Gold, Trip Smith, other investors, etc. And they've all been disseminated to create that 27% from Daniel Kratinsky. It's a positive move for me. I know sometimes with these type of takeover or investment bids, a, first and foremost, I should say, we haven't seen this at West Ham yet. I know we've seen Trip Smith come in early doors, but recently, given all of the GSB thing, given the failed stadium move, this is the first time we've had someone come in and invest in it, and it gives us a little bit of positivity to cling on to. He's saying the right things. I think the background in terms of his history, A, with Sparta Prague, I know that Sparta Prague fans have a bit of a, they're a bit on the fence about whether that's been a successful tenure or not. But but ultimately, he's, he's a businessman. He's a billionaire for starters. He has a connection with another football club. He's been at another football club. And he also has shares in other businesses across the UK. So, and, and even in just in terms of the commentary of what he's saying about the club, I think it's so crucial that, again, after the experience that we've had with these owners, whoever does come in in any capacity is someone that understands what West Ham's about. And I feel that, again, he, he's noting the right things. And what intrigues me about the deal more than anything, and from what I understand, it, by buying the £150 million shit pound worth of shares, that is going and it's being diluted within the club to allow for investment and, and debt reduction. Now, I hope that whatever way you look at it, whether it's providing capital to go and spend in January or whether it's reducing the debt that the GSB have obviously ran up, that it will free up transfer funds i think that's what we're all thinking now and listen i think where west ham are at i mean granted i thought we would do well this season of course following on from the last we didn't expect us to to break expectations and break the ceiling in the manner that we have done so i think we particularly when you look at december you i think there's a run of six fixtures within about three weeks west ham have got to be able to deal with the fixture pile up throughout the season and getting through that month will be a big ask in itself. So I guess from that point of view, who should West Ham look to bring in with Kratinsky's money, hypothetically speaking? And I'm not sure about the budget, but I do think there are there are deals to be had. We'll start with the obvious. I think it's Holacek. We know he's at Sparta Prague. We know there's been an interest from West Ham previously. And again, you look at someone who is a majority owner at Sparta Prague and who has now got a stake at West Ham, it makes perfect sense alongside the statement that he said regarding creating a partnership between the two clubs to bring in Holacek. As a player, incredibly technically gifted, very young still, but obviously he's made an impact at both domestic and at international level. We've seen fits and starts of him. It does intrigue me in terms of what type of player we would be getting. I, I don't look at him as a, as a player in the mould of Mikel Antonio. I think we've spent probably about 18 months looking for a striker that's, that's an, either an improvement in terms of finishing or is a player that can develop and, and build up play and hold the ball. And Holacek is is slightly different for me. Again, I kind of see him off the left in, in more of a 10. Obviously, he can play out front. He has got good finishing. And to be fair to him, he has backed that up with the goals that he's got. But in any case, I just think there's huge positivity there in trying to bring in a striker when required, a rotation option, a player that's young, that can develop. These are all positives. And, and similar to Suzchek and Sufal, very unknown entities, to be honest, before they came to the Premier League. So I think that's the move that West Ham will look to exploit that relationship with. The other could be centre-back now. I'm hearing rumours of Rob Dickey from QPR, who I think would be a great signing. And I have watched QPR a few times this season, so it's nice for me to be able to talk with some kind of capacity of experience. Bringing the ball out from the back, really comfortable in possession. We know Warburton, particularly with his centre-backs, they like to play out. They can deal with pressure very well. That would encourage me if West Ham were looking at that type of player. Although I think it depends on how you look at the Angelo situation. Obviously, we still don't know how long Angelo will be out for. You'd, you'd hope, best case scenario, it's a, it's a three month. And even then, I've said this previously, you, you've got to get a month worth of regaining fitness. Then there's form. We know that Angelo previously, it took him a while to regain form. So there is a, I do think it's right for West Ham to start looking at a centre-back, if I'm honest. I, listen, I think Baptiste is going to be an absolute player. He really is. And obviously we've seen with Ben Johnson, Declan Rice, there is a capacity within this West Ham Academy to go and improve. I just don't want to put pressure on him now. And I think that whilst he may start to get a little bit more game time towards December, I don't think it's right to rely on him, particularly with the type of competitions and particularly with the level of the Prem 
that we're competing at. Could be proved completely wrong. He could come in at times and be absolutely fantastic and there may be no need. I suppose the argument would be, do we need someone like a Rob Dickey who, again, whilst he has been good for QPR, is more of a, prog a progressionary signing, a player that will come in, that will take time to develop, to adapt to the Premier League? Or do we look long-term and sit there and say, well, James Tarkovsky's out of contract at the end of the season. Do we try and get a certain deal off Burnley for a player that we know, A, has been brilliant in the in the Premier, if I'm honest. B, I think he would he would fit West Ham's system perfectly, particularly alongside Kurt Zuma. Three, his age. There are so many factors that would benefit West Ham, and also I think that Moyes would fancy. But again, that that's that's a question for another day, really, isn't it? I think either or, and particularly at this stage, you trust David Moyes to bring in who he wants to, and and now with the investment, you'd hope that he has the money and the ability to do that. And then of course, there's question marks over Jesse Lingard, who. I think it's a player that, that does want to leave Manchester United. I think it was a it was a poor decision from him really to, to stay at that club with a lack of game time, with a lack of commitment from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I think everyone outside of Manchester United and, and let's be honest, even probably around Jesse Lingard knew that. I've got no qualms in him wanting to go there with his form and obviously how well he played for West Ham and, and charts his arm. But listen, I take him back tomorrow. I've said it before. I've said it on social media. I really, really would. And I think we are in a... We're in a very good position even in November now. And, and the way that West Ham are playing in Europe, in the cup competitions, in the Prem, we are gaining momentum. And when you are David Moyes in particular, and I don't know, I felt like, and this may be negated by the fact you bring in Holacek, but I looked the other day, particularly last 20 minutes or last 15 against Liverpool, and we go to 4 4 2 and we're, we're very deep and we weren't pressing. Mickey wasn't pressing. He'd obviously run out of energy. That's where you want a Lingard, really, if you, if you can afford to use him. And Lingard's such. A, he's a technically, he's a, he's a brilliant football player. He, he honestly is. He's intelligent, the runs that he makes off the ball, but he's very versatile as well. He's a perfect fit for our system even now. And West Ham are being more progressive and we are getting on the ball more. I think we can see Lingard, and I always look back at the Aston Villa game when he's playing between the spaces. And that was before West Ham really started to build in the final third as a side. That's what you want. And you can go on about the counters and, and run. So I think as a player, there's no question mark. I think you've just got to look at it in terms of price tag. I would hope... I Look, I, I would bring him in. If it was 5 million, I would bring him in. And I know, well, you know, he's at the end of the contract, at the end of the year. I think this opportunity that West Ham could have in January is massive. And if it means that we have to spend a little bit more, and again, I think 10 million... It is steep for a player that's out of contract. But if it's really negligible in that sense, I, I just would look to, to bite the bullet because we don't know how long this momentum is going to run for. And when you've got a side like we have with the momentum and the, and the system and, and the adaptability and everything, I think adding to that at the right time and adding to it now is crucial, even if it does take away from summer. The only, of, of course, the only caveat to that would be that they have to be David Moyes' players. If these are players that David Moyes would go and bring in, then, and they are, from what I understand, Tarkovsky a target, Lingard a target, Dickey would make sense, although I haven't heard too much about Moyes' interest in him. Holacek, someone that we've looked at as a club before, all of those things would indicate that those are players that West Ham could go for anyway in the summer. So if we can get them in now and the price isn't too much, Tarkovsky would be an interesting one because I think Burnley will look to cash in. I've heard Newcastle are interested. That that may be slightly more difficult, but but someone like Lingard, I think if we could pinch for, for 5 million or something like that, which again, probably Manchester United won't take anyway, then I would look at it. But there's the thing about this is, and again, this is me just, you know, speaking off the top of my head, these are just permutations. Anything can happen really now in, in terms of the January transfer window. And at least West Ham, we're going into a window having the capacity to assess these options because before we'd be penny pinching. We know we spent money, 60 mil in the summer. And we also know that GSB wouldn't back Moyes in January. I don't, I personally wouldn't feel that at all. I think that he did well to get that money out of him, if I'm honest. And I think where Kratinsky will show his credentials as a stakeholder in West Ham will be when he says, we back him now, we back him in the situation. And that's what David Moyes deserves. So I think it's exciting, the, the takeover. I think just having a, another face in that boardroom, taking away shares from Sullivan, taking away shares from Gold is, is important, really, I think. And, and long term, hopefully we see more of the momentum swing towards Kratinsky. Anything could happen now. But from a 
from from that side of things, it's better. From a football side of things, I think it's really positive. So that's my thoughts on the takeover. It's my thoughts on the signings and the implications on January. I did discuss it in a previous video, but I thought I would just air what I think that the takeover or the, the investment, I should really say, will mean for West Ham. But but that's it for me. If you've got any thoughts in the comment section, of course, put them in there. I'll have a read and, and I'll try and reply to as many of you as I can. Scarce in terms of content. If you've got any suggestions regarding any of the players' performances so far this season or anyone that you'd like to maybe see stats on or stats in terms of improvement, then I'm definitely all ears and I'll definitely put something together. So take care and uh, hopefully I'll see you all soon.